Thank you, Scout. And really, big, big thanks to Scout for putting this symposium together, getting you all here to spend some time together and to learn different things. I mean, I just got a little glimpse of Dr. Augustis and now also Dr. Newton's lecture, and I think it's just absolutely fascinating to see all the things we do, all the things we do, you do, together, right? Because it's not just us, and it's not just you, and it's not just them over there, it's everybody. We're all really in this, and we're doing absolutely fascinating work. Um, what I'd like to start with, um, we're gonna spend about half an hour, and it's not a lecture. It's gonna be very interactive. You can already don't worry about it, but we may get you a little bit out of your out of your comfort zone because communication is not just sitting there and listening. Communication is not just being a passive person in the room. Communication is something we do all the time, all the time. Why do you think I care about communication in health? Do you think communication matters in healthcare? Yes. yes. Tell me why. Give me some examples. Why does communication matter in healthcare? Safe. Safety. Patient safety. What else? Healing. Say louder. Healing process. The healing process. Tell a little bit more about that. Yeah. Because if you communicate. Speak up so they can all hear you. This is a communication <laughs> class. We want to make sure that everybody can hear you. I think that if you have a patient and you communicate clearly with your patient and your parents, yes. it helps promote the care that you're going to give. Absolutely. And if they know that there's a positive end to this, then the process might be easier. Right. We can inspire hope yeah. and healing by communicating with the parents. Yeah, great. What else? Some other reasons. Yeah. Well, in the OR, we need to know what the surgeon's plan is and what we need to have available so we don't get screamed at. <laughs> Screaming is a very good form of communication. No, it's not, right? But yes, communicating a plan, very, very important. Um, well, a couple more, a couple more reasons. Why would one care about communication in healthcare? Teamwork. 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 Teamwork, absolutely. Tell a little bit more about teamwork. Who said it? Oh, over there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You get, you get your turn. Go ahead. If we don't communicate as a team, right? And that's why the other part of this is leadership, right? Communication is such a crucial element for working together as a team. And people have to speak up, people have to be leaders, people have to be participants, right? Otherwise, if we're not on the same page, it's not going to happen, right? Go ahead, Mary. We all deserve to um, speak work. up. All oh, can hear you. We all deserve to work in a respectful, uh, supportive environment. Absolutely, right. Creating a respectful, supportive environment where everybody is listened to, and everybody can have a voice. Because in the end, that's all we need, right? We want to be heard. We want to be able to speak what we want to say. All of us want to make a contribution, and then we're already pretty much happy. Right. All right, maybe one more. Why does communication matter? Prevention of duplication of efforts. Yeah, of preventing duplication of efforts, right? Utilizing, utilizing our resources most efficiently, right? Very, very important. Great, thank you. Chris has one. <laughs> because you're lonely otherwise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you're lonely. Right? I mean, in the surveys we fill out, right? Do you have a friend at work? It's like, yeah, we have a friend at work, but only if we talk to them, only if we communicate with them. Right? Thank you, girls. Um, I'd just like to know a little bit about who's in the room. I heard from Scout here some nurses. Who are nurses? Great. We have our tech. Our tech, hi. We have some nurse practitioners, PAs, advanced practitioners, great, wonderful, welcome. Anybody I missed? Nursing students. Nursing students. Translator, thank you for being here. Child you are great at communication, right? I mean, Susan, that's what you do, right? You help us communicate in the right language with our family, so thank you. Did I miss anyone else? Child life, who's child life? Hey, you guys already did this with me once and with Chris because we did a little workshop, Child Life, in 
um, San Francisco and Child Life in Oakland. We put them together and we communicated for an afternoon and it was beautiful. Um, who's from the Oakland campus? Okay, who is not from the Oakland campus? Okay, great, wonderful. I like it that you're all mixed up and you can't really tell. It's like West Bay, East Bay. Because today, today this doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> I made a disclosure. I also do this at the business school, so you guys are getting a little tiny dose of business school knowledge here today. Um, and we already did this, right? Well, why does it matter? Communication is a skill that we do our entire lives. Right? If you look at a NICU nurse, you communicate with a little preemie. They communicate back to you, right? And you have a way of understanding what it is they're signaling you. And they don't do it with words, but you still understand, right? And sometimes we don't understand. It's like, we walk in there, it's like, oh, the baby's fine. It's like, no, 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 no. Baby's not fine. The baby just communicated something, right? That you know because this is your life. We may need to get trained in it, right? Our residents need to get trained in it. I hope that I have a little understanding of it after a few years, right? But really important, we communicate with our kids. Um, who thinks they're a great communicator? Okay. Who loves public speaking? Why? Good. Why? That's a lot of public speaking. She runs a lot of our huddles in the OR, right? And she's like a, a natural. But for everyone else, you may still be put in a situation where you have to be the communicator, right? Where you have to stand up, where you have to give a presentation, you have to give a lecture. And maybe it's not your favorite thing. Reality actually is, there's a lot of people out there who prefer death over public speaking. <laughs> because they're so scared, right? If you have to die or speak publicly, oh, I'd rather die, die. Oh. Right? So, we did this, we did this. Um, when is the last time you communicated? This morning. <laughs> right now, right? Because even when you just sit there and you say nothing, you send a message, right? And this morning we had trauma M&M. &M. There's a lot of people sitting in the room and some of them don't say anything the entire hour. Does it mean they're not communicating? Well, maybe they're communicating something, right? Maybe they're communicating that either I'm really engaged in listening or maybe they're saying, I'm just here. And I'm just here and working on my charts because I have 50 charts that I still have to do. So they bring their laptops, right? You go to meetings like that where everybody's on their phones, yes. right? Right now, nobody has their phone out, which means I'm doing something right, right? I'm engaging you in a way where you're not checking out, right? So one of these leadership or and communication principles, first thing you have to do is you have to show up. And you all have shown up. You're right here, right? And you're present. Right? Showing up is you bring your body to trauma M&M &M and your laptop, right? And then you spend an hour on your laptop and you leave. Did you just do a good job? Well, maybe not, right? Maybe we all believe that multitasking is something we're really good at, right? Because we have to multitask all the time. Reality is, multitasking, nobody is good at multitasking, right? Nobody is good at multitasking. They did studies, people, coding, right, so this in Silicon Valley, people writing software, and um, they interrupted them with an email. If somebody, you know, responds to the little email blurb, it takes them 15 minutes to go back into the flow of coding, right? So how often do we do this, right? We get distracted, oh, here's a text, let me just check, yeah, I'm listening to you, right? It's like, I'm listening, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention. What did you say? <laughs> I'm listening, right? I'm listening, I'm listening. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> right? So communication and showing up and choosing to be present is the most important thing. Right? And many of us do it really, really well when we interact with our patients because we're engaged. We ask them. We listen to them. That's what we're trained to do. All of us. But then, we oftentimes don't do it when it comes to interacting with each other or when it comes to interacting with the administration or when it comes to being at a meeting, right? We check out. So, lots of different things we're gonna talk about. Um, how do, so I'm gonna tell you a little story. How do most good stories start? Once upon a time, <laughs> in 
a land far away. Right? Once upon a time in a land far away. And so why do we do it this way? Because it helps us take the person who's listening into that space and into that time, into the magical forest, right? Where are we going? So here's my story. <clears throat> Three weeks ago, a man came at me with a knife into my back, through the skin, through the muscle, through the bone, stop this short of the knife. And then, that man who I didn't know took out a piece of herniated disc that was compressing my sciatic nerve. <laughs> that man was my neurosurgeon. <laughs> that morning, I had woken up, I couldn't feel my foot. And I had foot drop, and I was walking. So I called Curtis, who you all met earlier, and said, hey Curtis, I need an MRI. And he said, yeah, you do. <laughs> And he said, and you should stay NPO because there's a good chance you have surgery tonight. So I got my MRI. Here it is. And this little, I'm going to point it out here. This little black thing here that looks so asymmetrical. That's the herniated disc that's pushing on my nerve and that made my foot numb. I had other plans that day. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to fly to Germany to see my mom for her 70th birthday. Aww. I had to cancel. I had some other things planned. I had to cancel. I had patients scheduled to do surgery on. I had to cancel those too. And I didn't have a choice. It was a very, very straightforward message that my body sent me. And I want to thank the surgery team, Jim Betts and Jerry Adu and Chris, who all stepped up, including Sun and Kim and Tom and Wendy, said, don't worry about it. We'll take care of your clinic. We'll take care of your call. We'll take care of your patients. It's time for you to take care of yourself. And for me, it took that. Right? It took a very, very clear signal from my body. My body communicating to me. It's time to take a break. Now I'm doing better. It's three weeks later. I can walk. I don't have any pain. I'm doing really well. Why did I tell you this story? You personalize yourself. You feel a part of you. you feel a part of who you Say it louder. Say it louder so everybody can hear it. You personalize yourself. You're a part. Yeah, you where do you come down here from? Then? <laughs> All right, come with me. This is a class on communication. All right, tell them why I told the story. Because now you're real to me, and I, I feel you, and I feel who you are, and not just the doctor that comes around talking to me every day. Now you're a person. Right. You're not a stranger. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right? Did you hear that? When we communicate, we become more human. We have so many opportunities in and around the hospital every single day, but oftentimes we actually don't use them. We don't go there. We don't share the little vulnerable moment, because we don't. For me, it's however so important to do that, because then it's more fun to come to work. It's more fun to walk by on morning rounds and say hello and you know a little something about me, right? We become more real. So what we're going to do in the next 15 minutes, we're all going to become a little bit more real. <laughs> and this will, require, this will require for many of us to step a little bit out of our comfort zone. I'm not comfortable telling you about my surgery and about my mom's birthday that I'm missing. It's very uncomfortable. But at the same time, it makes me real, right? And so taking that little bit of courage to step out of the comfort zone of not saying anything, it's like, I'm fine. How was your weekend? Fine. <laughs> yeah. How's your surgery? Great, great. Thanks for asking. Right? Just going that little extra step into what we call the stretch zone. Just step out and be willing <coughs> to be a little bit uncomfortable. Just be willing to 
try something out. Right? And especially right here, we're all almost friends right now. Right? <laughs> and we'll just try some of this stuff out. If you go too far out of the comfort zone, <laughs> sometimes you end up in the danger zone. Danger zone, really uncomfortable. Like, I want to go back. So what are you going to start with? We're going to start with this. It's an incentive spirometer. Everybody know what an incentive spirometer is for? Why do you use it? Fill our lungs. What else? Preventive electrosis. Right? All right, everyone, everybody stand up. <coughs> and if you need a little space, step in the hall or step on the side. Sorry, left the space. What I want you to do is take your left hand and raise this invisible incentive spirometer that we all have now. Put it close to your mouth like this with a little tube in between. And then take a deep breath. Ah, and let the breath out. Great. Take another deep breath. See the little blue ball float up all the way up to the little um, whatever's up there. <laughs> <laughs> and exhale. One more deep breath. Deep breath. And exhale, and now maybe exhale with a sound. Ah. Ah. One more time. Deep breath. All the way to 2,000. Exhale on a sound. Ah. Ah. Two more times. Deep breath in. Exhale on a high pitched sound. Ah. Ah. One more time. Deep, deep breath. And same high pitched sound. Ah. Right, and last time, inhale, deep breath. And now exhale on laughter. <laughs> Tell me what you just experienced. What just happened in the room? Light hands. 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 Opens you up and makes you, your body feels relaxed. Yeah, your body just relaxes for a minute, right? You guys have been sitting here already for three and a half hours this morning. Fill your lungs with air, don't get electuses, right? And <laughs> breathe, feel it, right? What else? What else did you experience in the room? Yes? Embarrassment. Embarrassment, yes! <laughs> Remember the little stretch zone I just showed yeah. you? We just stepped a little bit into the stretch zone, right? Yeah. We got a little uncomfortable. It's like, oh my god, what's he doing? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put on my mask. Yes. Yes. Right. The leader. When the leader shows up and shows a little bit of vulnerability and shows a little bit of weirdness or silliness <laughs> or uncomfortableness, everybody's much more likely to buy in. Right. We all did it together. We all did it together. Okay. One or two more things. What did you experience? Yes. Inhibition. Inhibition. Tell me more about that, Toshi. It means that you can you can make funny sounds. Yes. But you you know you can do it yeah. because nobody said don't do it or it's okay to do it. Right. So you, no one's gonna judge us. Right? Nobody's gonna judge us, right? Because everybody's so occupied with themselves <laughs> and their own silliness and awkwardness, right? That they don't even worry about what's happening with you on your side, right? And we all did the same thing. Okay. One more. There was a couple back here. It reminds me when I exercise and I can't breathe. Yes. To uh, like breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth to slow down the heart rate. Yes, slow down the heart rate. Right? Breathing, very, very important. So in the context of communication, why do we think we focus on breathing? To calm down if you're getting... Calming down, okay. Give us a moment to think. Give you a moment to think, exactly. What else? There are any ENT people in here. We need to breathe to speak, right? The, the breath turns into sound, like you just saw. Really, really important. And a lot of people do not breathe 
when they speak. Right? <laughs> Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. Right? All right. Very, very good. Very, very good. What I want you to do now is turn to your neighbor and talk for a minute who your most inspiring leaders are in your own life. And they don't have to be world leaders. They can be mentors. They can be family members. Anybody who, who inspired you or who you admire around, around you. Just talk to your neighbor for 60 seconds. And if you don't have a neighbor, find me. <laughs> inspire us and, um, and, and act as role models every single day. Yes. And I think part of that comes with your willingness to be Why don't you come up here, Cassie? <laughs> yes, <laughs> give Deborah a hand. Um, <laughs> They're all yours. Oh my They're gosh. all just listening to you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you bring the gift of listening. Okay. It's really important. Listen to what Deborah has to say. I'm Debbie. I work in the emergency room. It's 37 years. My comment was basically, in terms of those who inspire me, it's hard to pinpoint. There's so many people on a daily basis that has inspired me throughout my whole life. And I think part of that is how open that we are willing to experience new things. People don't always have to agree with you, but there's always people have many different gifts. And I think as long as we're open to try different experiences, it enriches our life and our perception of what we do. And as nurses, because that's what we do. We, we, we work with such a diverse population, as well as patients and families and our colleagues, that we are, we are really, you know, wonderful wealth of um, opportunities, you know, to learn and the experience. And I think that's very important. Wow, it's look at her. <laughs> Wonderful, what a great public speaker. <laughs> How did she do? <laughs> Were you super comfortable? Yes. Good. <laughs> what made you comfortable? What, what aspect makes me comfortable? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Public speaking? Is uh -huh. that it? Well, I do public speaking. Uh -huh. I do teach. You can tell. Right? You can tell. And I have a lot of years. How about, of in, this, how about in this room? Oh, these are my colleagues. There you go. Right. These are my faces among my colleagues, the faces I recognize, and I interface with quite a few different people. There so. you go. We're all colleagues, right? <laughs> We're all colleagues. And if you listen to what Chris Newton just told us, when this difficult stuff happens, we get even closer. All right. Who else showed up in your leadership conversation? Yes. We actually talked about scouts. Oh! All right. Because I just I find the woman amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm I used to work here in the ER with Debbie many years ago, and um, now I'm a perioperative educator at Kaiser Oakland, and. I sit in, in meetings with Scott and I'm like, how do you do all this stuff? <laughs> I feel like I'm doing this constantly, trying to keep my head above water, and this woman's like amazing. She's doing all this stuff, she's always on top of stuff. I admire you so much, and what's your name, Kelsey? Kelsey is a, a MS nursing student, and she said you know, kind of the same thing, and I just find what you do amazing. I, I aspire to be like you sometimes. <laughs> What just happened here? What just happened? Acknowledgement. Recognition. Right? How good are we at this on a daily basis? We're not. Right? This is already my invitation to you, and I'm just going to say it right now because this was so beautiful. Right? A little bit of recognition, acknowledgement of the people around you. 
It doesn't have to be the ice cream social and the pizza. <laughs> it can just be, I really admire you. You did a really good job. Well, and that's what I found when I worked in the ER here, and this place is crazy. I mean, you have lines out the door for triage. And, you know, you just survived, but what made a difference is, and I don't even know, is Sharon still there as a manager? No. Okay. So she would have scrubs hanging in her office, and we know what hit the fan. Yeah. She'd be out there helping us. So when they needed people to stay over, we're all like, sure, we'll do it. Because we had the respect of her, and she respected us and knew when she needed to come out and help. She didn't hide right. in her office. It That's made a right. huge difference. Role models, leaders, communication, it's all tied together. Okay, maybe one or two more leaders that showed up in your conversations. Yes? <coughs> Uh, <laughs> Dr. Betts and I actually both said our sixth grade teacher. Yes. Yeah. Sixth grade those, teachers. I think those, those points in your life where you're especially open to being modeled. Uh, yes. When you have the right model, it can be really lifelong. Yeah. Do you think that teacher knows? She does. She does? Good. Did you tell her? Yeah. Oh my God, that's fantastic, right? <laughs> I did something very similar. I, in one of these workshops, I remember my math teacher from 10th grade. <laughs> He's in Germany. I found him on Facebook. I sent him a message. He was the happiest man. <laughs> what does it take? It doesn't really take much. Right? So back to acknowledging, appreciating, recognizing. So important part of communication that we can all do a little bit better. Okay. Scott, can I go 10 minutes over? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just till 11. Can you go 10 more minutes? 11, yeah, 11. Yeah. All right, good. One more leader that showed up in the conversation. Yes. I'll put you on the spot, Mary Mack. It's Mary Mack. Whoa! Uh, I thought of her because she always comes from a place of kindness. Yes. Um, and I can think back to one moment where she was at the bedside and I did something stupid. <laughs> and she was witness to this mistake. And she said, stop right there. I've made that mistake before. I've made it more than once. Yeah. Um, don't beat yourself up about it. And it, she felt like a guardian angel to me because it is totally something that I would have like beat myself up about yeah. the whole rest of the day, probably the rest of the week. But she was there, like amazingly, right when I needed her. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Thank you. So besides the recognition, what do you just hear in this whole story? Gratitude, okay. But there's also something really practical. There's kindness, there's gratitude, there's acknowledgement. You've got it. You are that person, Mary. Just, just a feeling that we're all human, we do make mistakes. We're all human. We're not perfect, and for her to acknowledge that it's okay to, to make a mistake and not, not feel like you're like you're stupid or yeah. you did something, oh my God, I did something wrong, I'm going to lose my job or something like that. That's right. So, In the beginning, we started out communication is important to patient safety. Does this story tell you anything about patient safety? Yeah. Right? Learning, growth, keeping the patient safe, keeping each other safe, being advocates for each other. So important. All right? Great. Anyone else want to mention a, a leader that showed up? Susanna? Oh, I was just going to finish commenting on that, that in terms of safety, <coughs> the way it was responded to the mistake yes. was that rather than making her <coughs> excuse me feel bad yeah about stand up it. stand up use your use your voice use all your love <laughs> yes. so rather than making her feel worse about the situation the you know putting it aside and that maybe even having you know if it needed to be dealt with later and going forward with her duties or responsibilities again patient safety she yeah. helped about herself yes. and knowing that you know, she went from I would have beaten myself up over this for a long time to thank you for helping me right what a beautiful what a beautiful shift right and what a beautiful way to keep our patients safer great any other comments about this great now if you just look around the room and think a little bit about yourself where you're at right now how do you feel right now about being in this group compared to maybe an hour ago. 
What comes up? What do you think just happened in the last half hour? 30 minutes only? Right. We engaged. Yes. What else? We learned. We laughed. We learned. What else? Motivate. Tell me more about that. You motivate to be better, to do better. You motivated to be better. Why? What motivated you to be better? Just the the examples and bringing people together and you know just sharing. Sharing. How you can. How you can. Yes. Do exactly. Who brought the examples? You guys, right? You guys, you have so much knowledge. You have so much wisdom. You have so much kindness and caring. Share it. Spread it. Share it with your people that are in the workplace, in the lunchroom, in the cafeteria, in the elevator in the morning. Right? I mean, we all have it. And it's our decision how we show up and what energy it is that we want to share. All right? So in the last, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to add that the other thing that I feel in the room <clears throat> is comfort, but also professional. I feel that professionalism is perfect. Okay, yes. Priority. Just feeling as though I'm working with professionals, and I also feel comfortable. Yes, and professionalism and comfort. All right. My professor says work is not the enemy. Mm -hmm. Professionalism doesn't mean we have to turn off all our kindness and all our love and all our community sense. You can have both, right? Thank you. What else? A couple more emotions of what do you feel like right now? Yeah? Validation. Tell me. Um, through communication. Yeah, speak up so everybody can hear you. Okay. Yes, uh, you said it. This is my question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be, everybody can hear you. Um, okay, yes. <laughs> to um, know that by communicating, I can learn a little bit more about you and everything is real yes. and um, we can all relate with each other, yes. and which makes our work um, professionally and our personal lives um, interconnected, which makes our work easier as, you know, in, in some capacity. Yes. So we're not total strangers here. Yes. There's going to be some connections. Wow. In, Give her a big hand. Like, this is really what it's about. Everything you just said, we feel interconnected. It makes our lives easier. It makes our lives safer. Right? Yeah. I have a question for you. What's your opinion on language, the differences ah. of languages in a work setting in this case? Yeah. And, and, and when you speak it and when you don't, languages and share with other people. Can we talk about this right after? Sure. Okay. <laughs> I think language is very, very, very important because we have to honor the other person by speaking in a way that they can actually understand us. Right? If we don't honor them, we dishonor them. We don't want to dishonor our patients and our families. So even if it takes five minutes or ten minutes to wait for the translator, it is so important because it makes all the difference on their side. Yes? And I think everything that we're saying Stand up. is, is for Yes, tell them you're doing it. I think as much as we're talking about each other, I think it also is uh, I also think it's important to know that it translates to our families as well. You know, in the OR, we have such a small amount of time to build rapport with our families, and I always take that extra minute or two to share something or build connection. I'm a mom, so they know that I have that sense that I'm bringing my my love for kids, my passion of what I do professionally, and that could be merged. So I always try to build a communication and allow them to know something a little bit. So um, I'm more real, just because our communication is so short. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. The surgeon who operated on me, I've seen him for 90 seconds, right? And 30 seconds was, oh hey, I hear you work at Children's Hospital, what do you do there? It's like, I'm a surgeon. Okay, great, I have to tell you about the problems that can happen with your surgery. <laughs> yeah, a plot plot could be infection, there could be recurrence, there could be blah, 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 blah. Any questions? <laughs> so what I want to invite you now for one minute, think about what are you going to take out of this half hour into your workplace this afternoon or tomorrow 
that you want to do a little bit differently than you may have done it up until now? What's this little change in behavior that you could take out of this mini, mini, teeny, tiny 30-minute workshop on communication that we just did? Just think about it for yourself. And then I would love to hear a few examples. So just think for like 15 seconds in silence by yourself. serious sounds. <laughs> Who wants to give me their example? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So um, I work in the OR, so yes. I would like to say we have a very limited time with our patients. Yeah. And it's only in the pre-op phase where we go to check on check our patients. Yeah. We have that very short, brief time to ask them the questions. And I try to, you know, relate somehow to them and find out, you know, if I find out, I hear them talking about an activity or something, I try to engage them in that to try to personalize it somehow, whatever's going on. Or if they have a problem, I say, oh, I have that. Oh, oh you're my mom, my right. age. Something to make them feel like I'm a real person too and I care about them. Be a little bit more real. Mm -hmm. right? Share a little moment. Engage. We can all use a dose of that. Plus. Um, I'm actually a new nurse and so I also like to call myself a recovering perfectionist. Uh, I know many people who go into this field are as well, um, and I've seen just how that little moment of vulnerability can open up a big door for a lot of people who aren't really comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, because once you open up that door, like some people who have never really had that door open for them, yeah. just feel just completely validated. Yeah. What could that look like? Um, like the example that uh, you just shared uh, for uh, Mary was, you know, I've made that mistake too. Hearing yeah. that from your preceptor or your supervisor or something like Absolutely. that is really huge. Great, thank you. Anyone else, what are you going to take from this half hour that you want to take into your life? I'm Heather, I'm on the project with Scout, and the thing that stuck out with me was the circles that we started with, so the comfort zone and the stretch zone. And so for me, coming into this area, not knowing a lot of people and trying to work on this project and implementing it, going into that stretch zone, taking that extra effort to introduce myself and kind of like tell people what about just